and like during the day, and now it's just absolutely frozen. But there are absolutely no shots as far as like introducing the players because we've already done already all that. Exactly we are straight are. into pick and ban yep. for game one. Afrika Freaks versus Hanwha Life Esports. Um, I do want to let throw out a, a quick PSA before we get started. <laughs> uh, my brain is not going to be capable of doing any sort of analytical commentary, yep. and therefore Achilleos is going to be your color caster with all of his experience coming not from any League of Legends. It's going to be apart incredible. Apart from three days of Casper Cup. Three, ga three days of Casper <laughs> Cup. Everything that came between I don't know the start of League of Legends up until season eight. There we go. I mean, that's still and eight that's, years. There's a decent gap, though. There's that one-year gap. <laughs> yeah. Of, uh, Let's just hope, you know, Kaiser isn't picked and uh, you it's know, okay. no one uses Teleport. Please I read the preseason Oh, wait, no, you learned that one. You learned that one. I so. did learn that one. Yeah, Teleport's been nailed, so I think we're absolutely fine. So here we go. We've got the Yumi Band away from Lahens, an understandable one. I believe you even have some experience with the old uh, Lahens Yumi from our previous broadcast, which was technically two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> but feels kind of like I should be saying yesterday, but I'm uh, currently very, very confused. Heimerdinger and Cassiope are going to be banned as well. So entirely bottom lane bans. Uh, Cassio certainly a favorite of Lava's and did very, very well. Yeah, so a lot of those are going to be taken away. The Syndra is available, however, and that's been a very prime pick. So we'll be locked in for Fly, who is very well versed on that champion. Of course, now over to the side of Hanwha Life with the Misfortune and the Zygon. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Varus. There we go. Oh, I, couldn't finish, Tom I couldn't finish my sentence because otherwise I would have looked really smart. Now it looks like I'm just oh, going along it. with it. But I was going to say the Varus has been either the pick against the Misfortune or the Prime pick if she is off the board, unless you want to go for that mage bottom that you're talking about. Rise will also be locked up here by Hanwha Life to accompany the Varus. And we'll have to see where they want that to go. Uh, whether it's going to be for Tempt in the mid lane or Cuvee up top. But Rise is pretty flexible and he's also pretty good in most matchups. So. Yeah. I like the flexibility here, certainly good in the first round. Spirit hovering the Kiana, a pick that he's been playing quite a lot in solo queue recently, so definitely a flex between himself and Fly. Of course, Fly uh, likely to be piloting the Syndra Mystic, uh, more notably uh, a primary marksman player. However, will have uh, been doing some time on the mages on the bottom side of the map as well, so definitely technically... Oh, wow, we oh my goodness, what the heck, our first Lucian! This has been banned so many times. It was left entirely through a draft yesterday for some unknown reason. I, and we're going to finally figure out why it's been permabanned. Okay. This is see, this is the state that we're at. We didn't even notice that the thing that was 100% banned <laughs> yeah. made it through the draft because of how long everything has been going on for. But yeah, Lucian actually going to be locked in. And we have to see where that's going to go because suddenly this, you know, the Lucian could be in the mid lane for Fly. The Syndra could be going down yep. into the bottom lane for Mystic, as you were alluding to. We have the Nautilus coming through, so you know either support or mid, perhaps to have something a little bit beefier in the mid lane to go up against that Lucian. We get the crap poked out of you, however you would expect. <laughs> but Thresh will be taken away for the side of Hanwha Life, so looking to get rid of that uh, that yeah. awkward relationship bot lane, I guess we could call it. Yeah, the wife steal. Mm. Good old wife steal uh, bottom lane. And the wife now in the game, which yes. uh, is the weird part. So is it still wife steal if she was returned? I what? don't really know. And do, if you kidnap someone, is it actually called returning? I don't know. They're not a <laughs> library book. Uh, <laughs> let's move past this one. As Echo is going to be banned away, and I wish I had some of his powers right now to remove that conversation from the broadcast. I just, every time you say wife steal, I think of the bishop from the Princess Bride. Is it Bowage? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I haven't thought about the Princess Bride for quite some time. It's inconceivable. All right, Zoe going to be banned away here as well as the Afrika Freaks look at their final ban here on the blue side. And then Lava will be able to pick something away, likely to be an Aatrox. It'll be the first time our QV has actually played a champion more than once though, so certainly uh, been playing a lot so far in the five games that we have experienced Harmwell Life Esports, okay, and well. that is one of the picks that has been doing some work, but it was mostly Lehens using uh, the Quinn as more of a, a an aeroplane to fly around the rift. Well, I do see it taken away. I was expecting maybe perhaps to see Tom Kench ban because they do have uh, the, the Varus on the side of Harmwell Life, so perhaps just a freak getting the inkling that this is going to be a Nautilus support and they're just saving that final pick for attempt in the mid lane. We'll have to see how things transpire for now. They have a little bit of flexibility. Yeah. in that regard. So 
uncertain where the Lucian is going to go, the Syndra, thereby also going to be no. shifted around. But speaking of Tom Kench. Shelly, please. All right, it's Tom Kench on the bottom side of the map. I was actually going to say that my gut feeling is that we're going to see Lucian bottom lane, but that is not sort of the Korean way in scrims at the moment. So looking at this, generally you'd what? expect that. However, it looks like we're going for a Jin Tom Kench bottom lane. Okay. We'll have Syndra mid, and we're going to go with the top lane Lucian picked blind and into Hummer Life. Yeah, so just going to have that Kiana sticking right where she's at. And hey, how about a Blitzcrank? How about a Nautilus mid as well for Tempt, which yeah. uh, could be a cute one. Make it a lot more difficult for that Tom Kench to get saved, especially on somebody like Jin. If he gets hooked in, he is uh, you can. quite squishy. But... You can devour someone out of it, as we might have this double-ranged bottom lane. So far, as far as our support center is con s concerned, we've seen her pa paired alongside the uh, the Yasuo and the Aurelia. And I never want to see those bottom lanes ever again. They yes. were awful. And uh, so this is going to be a bit of a mix-up uh, with uh, what we're going to get. And I like double range. It it reminds me of those times, and uh, I'm really uh, I'm glad that, uh, well, I guess yesterday we saw Gorilla play because he did popularize the Misfortune support uh, yes. at a Worlds a couple of years ago. That one you definitely will remember, Mr. Achilles. Absolutely. And uh, Senna just feels like a champion designed to be a better version of that. Has that uh, the range auto attack and uh, the extra range that you can get from that passive, which is pretty busted, plus the piercing darkness to go alongside the piercing arrow up against Piercing Light. There is so much piercing There is on the bottom side of the map. Well, we are just about ready to go ahead and jump into game number one. Some very interesting compositions coming out, especially for the side of Afrika. A lot of AD damage coming through that Syndra in the mid lane. Gonna have to pump out the AP and see if it's enough for them to get a win. Yeah, see whether it's going to be enough damage just with Fly there. But ladies and gentlemen, here we are finally. We've ticked over to New Year's Eve and that means more League of Legends. Humble Life versus Afrika Freaks for theoretically our second matchup of the night, but the first of the day. Let's get into it. Well, Africa. obviously there's no one to do the fan shoes. The fan shoes here. Africa, Hana, do set. Africa fighting. I'm waiting, to, I'm just waiting for the transition screen to go. Okay, oh, sorry, sorry. All my life, Hana, do set. Hana, do life fighting. Damn, right. Hanwha fans are super keen today. Yeah. My goodness. I mean, All right, well. those deep voices, too. I know, I know. <laughs> the police, no, it's just the Kespa after, but I thought I it was the Hanwha staff looking some, at it. Sometimes as the day goes on, your voice tends to get deeper. I yeah. think that's what happens. And so therefore, you know, they've been here for a while, and therefore uh, things have, have deepened just a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rift right now. Mm-hmm. Dead uh, even, 2.5 thousand gold per year. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving us the gold update at <laughs> one minute into the game. Absolutely fantastic. The that being is, said... That's, that's the peak analysis you're going to get. Yeah, when it comes to getting ahead of yourself, <laughs> uh, I think that, you know, that's it's... Uh, it's already being done at this point in yeah. time. You're allowed to do whatever the heck you want. But seeing Jim for the first time here in uh, the Casper Cup, uh, Mystic going to be piloting that one. Does like his skill shot champions there on the bottom side. So certainly a comfort pick for him. And uh, Fly back on the Syndra, despite us thinking that that was going to be a flexible choice. And Tempt is hiding. Oh, there he is. Now he comes back out again. I like the skill shot champions. Point and click. It's just too boring. Yeah. Well, that's why we reworked Rise. Just didn't want that to happen anymore. As we call it. <laughs> no Annies to be seen. To use some terminology that we use in the Overwatch League, it's a, mm -hmm. dis it's a dishonest hero. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not honest to the amount of uh, skill you have, that sort of thing. Yeah, pretty much. All right, Mystic getting some orders off a lot, be taken of damage. a lot of damage. He's exhausted. Yeah, flash away. As uh, I chose a little bit. My apologies. No, that's all right. Honestly, like let's just let's just see how the, the see how the chips lie. Whoever's <laughs> the loudest at the time, they can yell about it. I don't I don't think there's uh, there's any issues here. As the dancing grenade not exactly going to salsa its way over to the enemies at this stage. And Mystic with a, a big shot still in the chamber. Not going to be able to land it on any champions just yet. There's lava. Bit of uh, damage to answer back, and I like this. We're seeing Lava on his second Marksman out of five games. And uh, speaking of keeping honest, sometimes, you know, when a... Uh, oh. oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Are you ready? I am 
well, look, to be honest, I'm pretty used to it at this stage of the night. Um, it's going to be confusing having you here to help me out. Well, I, you know, I, I originally, I got the phone call and he said, would you be able to come down to the studio and help out? And after having watched what you were going through and having been through it uh, myself yeah. numerous times, as everybody remembers the, the old pause of with me and Monty back in the yeah, day. Good old pause of doom. Um, I couldn't let you go through this solo <laughs> as much to my ability. Obviously, we're already going through it solo, but uh, once the opportunity I mean, if I, if had I was arisen to, that I could help you out, I had uh, the leap at the opportunity. If it was this moment and I was by myself, I don't know what would happen if that sepia screen popped up mm. with me by myself. That's, uh, uh, that's your it. mental would break. Yeah, I think that might that might have been you know the, that, uh, the breaking point. There's that I forget. I don't even know what episode it was from because there's so many. But the, there's that one episode I believe is SpongeBob where his brain breaks and it literally shows it in his skull and it just snaps. <laughs> Yo. That's basically what happens that uh, when it comes down to those types of situations. So um, it's okay. I'm here. I'll keep. You, I'm your. Uh, I'm your constant. Oh, For those goodness. who have watched All Lost, right. I'll make sure that you yep. don't, yep. you don't lose hold. your mind. So the descent into madness will be either both of us uh, and not, not, not just one of us, which is certainly the way that we want to do it. Yep. Um, do you know what I think is really cool about this particular moment? Mm. We can actually play that game of uh, uh, I Spy. Oh, can we? No, uh, we can't. Dang it. All right. Well, if another pause comes, you got the I Spy to look forward to. Cause I Spy is League of it. Legends. Uh, all right. Uh, that was a... A slight mic sound issue, I think. Yep. But uh, we have resolved it. And uh, everything is... Oh, sorry. Lighting system. There we go. Uh, either way. Take it care of now. So mm -hmm. we can carry on. Carry on. Carry on dancing. To quote one of my favorite bands from the 90s. Savage Garden. Mm. I've been listening to them quite some time. I know. It's been a while, right? All right. We were listening to some old stuff. Uh, it. Last night is 10. It's down to about 100 He's health. Dead. As those mm, caster creeps were enough. Spirit didn't even need to land that last. That's a bit of a late flash. Slightly uh, delayed. From yeah. good old temp there, but uh, either way, we'll get taken out. So first blood. Nicely going over to Afrika. And that will help them out quite a bit, given how much their bot lane has been getting bullied. Temp will just take that TP back through and try to continue on with his farming so he doesn't fall too much far, uh, further behind in that regard. Yep, Keen uh, is going to spot Haru here, taking the Rift Scuttler. Not going to try and... Uh, do battle with him. Uh, little did he know, Haru d didn't actually have his smite available, so he might have been able to actually work on stealing some things away. Uh, I do want to go up towards the top side and actually look at what uh, Keen's able to get done with this solution, having it be uh, permabanned apart from one game and having this be the only one that we've actually seen it picked up. Do want to see what all the fuss is about, but uh, I'm glad that we see it in a solo lane because that is... Uh, the reason why a lot of these Korean teams are respecting this solution so much is its ability to flex between mid and top rather than be utilized in the bottom lane. Yeah, I know that our... Uh, I was going to say our resident sick boy. Uh, I know that <laughs> LS, yep. uh, who is unfortunately ill, I should say, uh, is very confused about it. So I'm sure that he's at home resting up, trying to feel better, but also watching this very intently to see just what exactly has been going on with this solution and figure out the mystery surrounding it. Try to peel back the, the mist and reveal mm. uh, exactly what's been going down. Well, so far, what's been going down is more creeps on uh, the Lucian's side. So, so far, so good as far as showing us that this is a power pick. And always, you know, we, we saw Hooney play this, you know, a couple of years ago. You were there for that one. Um, we don't mention the Hooney Lucian. <laughs> yeah, the Hooney Lucian was one that uh, I think he was allowed to play in certain games uh, and not others. Um, but also, Kuzan was a very notable mid Lucian player who would get uh, mid Lucian bans even when it was more of an 80 carry pickup. As Control Ward goes down, spots that there is a ward that sees the Kiana. And that is going to be Tempton Haru taking a, a moment to move towards topside, but Keen, very heads up, is going to move himself out of there. Yeah, got the call early. So we'll just be a takeaway on the Gromp here for Haru, and we'll be in a position if Kiva can keep pushing that minion wave up underneath the tower, they might be able to try to go for something onto Keen, but obviously going to be very elusive as he does have that E dash, go ahead and take himself away from things like the Sonic Wave, so Haru might not be able to find any type of engage. We'll be recalling just in case they can get the wave in position for him to try the dive, so he's going to be inching back more towards that brush. As there's just a little bit of skirmishing there into the bottom lane. The overload not connecting. Yeah, still going for it. Cullen comes out. QV going to tank up some turret shots, and there was no way that dive was working. I actually really liked the Keen moved back underneath the turret. 
because he saw the Nautilus head back to the mid lane and knew that two versus one wasn't going to be good enough yep. underneath that turret. And so. not only that, but it, it, if, if it is that much of a heads-up play here for Keen, which given who it is, given Keen's yeah. uh, repertoire, it very well could be. It opens up immensely here for Spear to come down into the bottom lane where he's struggling against the Dragon, but of course has the smite heal. So we'll be okay in the end. So they get that first Drake kill confirmed. No interruption whatsoever from the jungler of Hanwha Life. So very nice start for Afrika. Yeah, moving towards a uh, Mountain Drake for our second one. Earth, Wind and Fire on the table. Uh, if we do get that Infernal Soul that we had so much of yesterday. My goodness, just too many Infernal Souls as Mystic is going to get snared up. The teleport is going to be the response. Lava in trouble. Down to 100. Keen's going to pick that one up. The flash forward from Jelly just licks the hands and he is going to go down as well. Double kill for the Lucian. Although I don't think it was all about him in that particular play. Jelly really earning his spot in the support role. Either way, just a really good opportunity for them to collapse in. I mean, this is a... Very squishy bot lane that Hanwha Life has set up for themselves with the double AD, essentially, you know, the Senna going over for the support, of course. But uh, we'll go ahead and take another look at this one. It's just very well set up. They try to push forward to get onto Mystic, but the root comes through. The TP instantly on the back end of the root. So Lava, he just doesn't have any escape. This is why I was talking about maybe having the top Kench over on the side for Hanwha Life. But they don't have it, so they can't devour the Varus to try and keep him safe. And they both just end up getting taken down. So very well played by the Afrika Freaks and a great call on the TP. So Keen comes down and he profits immensely for that. Tied in CS, but now has a bounty on his head with a 2-0 start. Yeah, the thing that I absolutely love about that play was how fast Keen pressed that teleport button. There was one yep. route that landed. There was Mystic having like, what, a few seconds uh -oh. to lock that one down. And speaking of locking things down, Tempt locks himself towards the wall and is going to survive. So back to my point. Yep. Uh, there was only a couple of seconds. Mystic said, I've been rooted. This is now your opportunity. Lehen steps a little bit further forward than he should have, and instantly Keen is there with the teleport. Like, yep. The communication is just brilliant, and this is a team that hasn't been together very long, apart from, uh, you know, Spirit and Keen playing together alongside Jelly, I guess, but he was uh, the support, the, the sub-support okay. anyways, Death Charge. Going to register. Q lands. That's a huge one, but Scatter the Week is good. But here's the arrival. Yep, the ult comes forward. Snare is good to help protect Haru, but Flies found Tempt on the bottom side. Spirit dancing around here as well, but Lava's going to turn up. The extra movement speed. Meanwhile, on the top side, the curtains have been oh, called, but La Hands culled to. D oh no! Oh. One more bolt would have done it, and there's a blast going to keep him alive, but no spirits there. He's with stolen the away from shot. Yeah, that was a cute one because actually that probably would have killed. The Deadly Flourish was going to connect, so Spirit just trying to get involved, making sure that this Jin can't get any kills whatsoever, it would seem, but he still does have the assist, and I, this is just yet another situation that Hanwha tried to set up for themselves really aggressive, as I'm sure we'll have the replay in a moment, but it, it just nets them absolutely nothing, and now Lava might be in a spot of bother. Yeah, might not be able to get towards that replay because Jelly's going to yeah, lick Lava, and that is going to activate that Deadly Flourish, so Mys Mystic causing the flash to come out. And uh, now Avaris with no flash or a Tom Kench is going to be very vulnerable bottom side. Normally we'd recommend not licking Lava either, but taking another <laughs> look uh, at this. I mean, Temp just trying to go hard in the paint, got the depth charge cut out, and Sonic Wave does come through, but Fly times the E perfectly, pushes him back, sets up for Haru to have to flash away so he doesn't get deadly flourished, and they just, they part themselves. Temp gets completely cut off. They can't kill off Spirit. The snipes come through, and he just has the damage output on this Lucian to just go ahead and rip everybody to shreds and set up for the finishing blows. It's just, I don't know, uh, a really weird disjointedness coming through from the side of Hanwha Life. Uh, no one really on the same page, or at least all on the same page, but it's the wrong page. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're all on the wrong page. However, this is, uh, if you have a look over the other side of the coin, it certainly is another example of the Afrika Freaks just having better communication, having better control of this early game. And uh, so far, Perfect game pace, Achilles. We've, uh, in fact, that was back in your time when the Afrika Freaks were just known as having the perfect game ones. They were just so good at it. Yeah. Don't watch the rest of the series most of the time, but they're game ones. Damn. Absolutely amazing. And maybe we're getting a taste of that once again. That was usually when Tucson popped off really hard. Yeah. And then you're just like, what happened in <laughs> games two and three? <laughs> Tucson giveth, Tucson taketh away, uh, I feel is now KT's issue. Yeah. Um, however, he has had some stand-up oh, issues like you're talking about. So, yeah, definitely has been uh, certainly giving it. 
on both sides. This fly clears out this wave, but Tempt, he wants to be able to at least go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, finds a dredge line, but there's the culling. No more maneuverability here from the Nautilus. But he's still very tanky. Yeah. So he's okay, and he's got... He's got that potion, so he'll just go ahead and chug up, chug up a couple of times and be all right. Honestly, he's not that far behind as far as the CS is concerned, so has been keeping pace with the Syndra. Yeah. Which is quite good once you get that much AP coming through, and he's got the boots to help get that extra little bit of MR coming through. So the damage doesn't do nearly as much, and we will just see a second Drake picked up. So Infernal, making things interesting at least. Being yeah, the third is that spot. Earth, Wind, and Fire, so we're going to open up the map. Uh, a whole lot now as we light those fires in the mid lane and of course around the Brambleback. Mystic towards the bottom side, once again just dancing some grenades around here and we'll see how this Arjun is going to fare in the late game. Not sure whether you saw uh, the Reddit post recently about, um, I didn't know that there was League of Legends speedrunning. Did you know there was League of Legends speedrunning? What? Yeah, so there are categories like how fast you can get through the tutorial, how fast you versus five bots, how, far you, how fast you can win the game, that's a category. Uh -huh. And also, it's how fast you can kill Baron. And uh, the, the time is, so someone with AP Jin apparently killed the Baron at 20 minutes and one second. Solo. Yeah, so they solo killed the Baron in one second. I didn't watch the video, which is unfortunate, because it was sort of between games, and I was just checking Reddit, and then I saw it, and I was like, that's curious. I want to come back and watch that. Didn't. But kind of wish intriguing. I did, based on what I'm talking about here. But huh. yeah, it was Jin that did it. And uh, I was playing the AP Jin, so we're not going to see uh, Mystic do exactly uh, what he did. But I don't know how that even happened. Yeah, I have no idea. I actually did something similar years ago, before I was even in commentary at uh, just at like a LAN party with a bunch of friends and we decided to throw on, um, we had like a, I don't know, $20 gift card or something on the line yeah, yeah. that we put up and it was just whoever could kill all of the towers the fastest. You had to kill, clear every single turret on the map. Maybe that's a category. Maybe I just didn't read down If it's enough. not, that then it should like be. It Congratulations. Be. There you go, speedrunners. Oh, uh, Look at and us giving the, the, the real information, right? This is back in the day. But uh, I attempted it with Twisted Fate, because I figured, you know, being able to jump around the map, uh, having yeah, the yeah. ultimate would be pretty nice. But uh, it was Heimerdinger. OG Heimerdinger that was able to take it. I guess that would make sense. Yeah. I mean, OG Heimerdinger could actually repair turrets as well, so you keep yours alive Ooh. at the same time. It's Haru. Nice, Smites way. away his own blue buff. Sparing some blushes. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that doesn't take them out of perfect game territory, but actually the tower that they killed does, so never mind. Yep. My bad. So, yeah, one Missed turret on that away one. from a perfect game, so still, you know, it's pretty close. I was too busy, about to, uh, too busy talking about killing all of the towers on the map to notice that the other tower had gone <laughs> down in the actual <laughs> game. A little bit ironic that uh, the conversation was about dead towers while uh, the tower was falling. Definitely more ironic than everything in the song ironic. Which song I wrote? Uh, that one that says, like, isn't it ironic, don't you think? Oh, Whatever God, is. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. nothing is actually irony. Sort of like that song, like, don't you think it's about you? Yeah. Which, and, like, you know, obviously it is. You know? I don't remember who sings that song. Dang, what's wrong with me? You're so vain. Yeah, that's the one. But, yeah, like, I mean, it kind of is. I don't remember who sings it. It depends who the you is, I guess. Like, maybe it's a different you. But maybe it it's means... It's about someone. It's got to be true in some way for someone. Maybe it means you spelled like Y-E-W. Ah, like a, but then it's about them. Like, regardless of whether they're a female goat or not. Sure. It's still about them. There or maybe there's no specificity on the exact female goat that it is about. And that's the issue. I feel like this, uh, this conversation got derailed very quickly. Well, it hasn't been much else going on. <laughs> it's still true. just going to be 5-0 uh, at the moment here. You're going to reference me at some point in this game, and I'm not going to know whether you're talking about me or, or a goat. <laughs> Very confused. Uh. See, this is what I this is my plan all along. I knew that your mind was in such a <laughs> fragile state oh, that I no. could very easily abuse I'm it. I'm being my... mentally abused. <laughs> Please, someone send help. You've already had help sent. I am it the was help. Achilles. <laughs> no. <laughs> my final punishment, so beautifully orchestrated. Mm. I am the help. Mm -hmm. I am Pagliacci. <laughs> well, speaking of orchestration, let's see where the Mystic can perform on this gin. First time we've seen it so far. Yeah. Has been a pick that we've seen floating around uh, as far as solo queue is concerned. There's been a lot of players that have been uh, uh, delving into the gin. And that was actually one of those picks that I really wanted to see a little bit more of uh, in Meta's past. Because, yeah, it's not like uh, 
He's much different than he used to be, but opting in for more of those consistent damage dealers in the Kaiser and the Zaya uh, in patches past, and now Misfortune certainly being up there. It was looking like there was maybe potential uh, fishing for a fight breaking out in mid, but if you're just playing forward as they get ready for this Infernal to spawn. Yeah, heading towards a uh, Dragon Soul quite quickly on a Oh, q -bang. side. Yeah, oh dear. Yep, supreme display of talent, relatively unnecessary, but uh, still going to confirm the kill onto Cube, who continues to have a pretty rough Kesper Cup thus far. I mean, that's the whole point. It's a display. It's like a display item. It's not for sale. Ah. So it doesn't need to be used to actually kill anybody. It's just a show off, like, what can be done. Yeah, like, look at my talent that I just used exactly. to, to gameplay you against the wall. Precisely. Mm -hmm. And with Cube gone, that is just going to be Hanwha saying, you know what? Let's not. Try and go for a dragon. It's only the third. There's one more chance. So they get five more minutes before they have to worry about the Infernal Soul coming through for Afrika. Yep, and uh, in fact, these grenades are starting to do a fair bit of damage as well as this mm -hmm. crit is starting to build up. I don't want to have a conversation about how to calculate Jin's damage because uh, I'm just not quite there yet. And there is a fight breaking out like you're talking about. Depth Charge going to be utilized onto Fly, who gets devoured. Jelly just being thrown around like a beach ball. Both of them go golden at the same time at the teleport. TP. He's going to be here. Double flashes fly in from the side. Is now Haru down to half health, but Tempt is flashing on forward. It's calling. Haru's time to use his timepiece as the culling does come down, but isn't able to get enough. Keen still flashing on into they three people. Is now Mystics like, I don't know about this one, my dude, but they're still alive. Double kill comes in and they both get out. All right, we're going to see a, uh, a replay. Should have banned that Lucian. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Wow, incredible. I thought he was definitely dead. I incredible boundaries set there by Keen. I th thought for sure that that was just going to be the end of it. The ace coming through onto a freak of freaks. The fight starts off so well for Hanwha Life, but, uh, I mean, Keen puts up a Chovy-esque performance, I guess <laughs> yeah, we can say, yeah. after what happened two days ago. Mm -hmm. um, with his Orn, that they were able to turn this one around. I mean, the TP straight in, Jelly and Fly just looking like they were going to be dead. The Flash chase over the wall to go ahead and finish off the Tom Kench, make sure there weren't going to be any further Devourers in. Keen blows the calling, doesn't get that much damage done, so you think that's going to be over with, but goes over the wall just showing off, dashing back, and the crit damage is coming through, ripping them to shreds, gets sort of Haru in the oh, front wow. line, and he and Mystic able to set up that final kill then on the tempt and escape with their lives intact. So they maintain the goal. They do give over three kills, but still ahead. And now it's a 5-0-2 Lucian stretching the, the bounty gold here. The 550 Black Cleaver completed. Two long swords in the inventory as well. I mean, Keen, he is a force to be reckoned with, speaking oh of which. So looking for the roof, but it doesn't matter. The calling will just burn him down. The effective solo kill. The rest of the shots coming through from his teammates from Mystic, they don't connect, but they zone him back to keep him in the ultimate. That was my that was the first zoning deadly flourish that I've seen, <laughs> I think. That was really cool. Made sure that uh, Keen did definitely rip him apart yeah. with the culling. Would you I, like to die or would you like to die? Yeah, that Pick was, now. That's it's not a great choice. Yeah. That's what they set up for him. I, my answer would be no, is that's a great uh, uh scout of the week. As Spirit looks for a potential dive, but the wave clear is there. Dash Cannon, thankfully, online for Tempt. But uh, Keen, not going to be too worried about uh, the Realm Warp, given the uh, uh, pretty lackluster state of uh, Cubay's rise at this stage of the game. Not behind too much as far as farm is concerned, but when there's a 6 as the kill score in comparison to a 1, you could expect that Keen is certainly a big deal. As we have a look at this replay, um, and this is just cull. Hello. Bye. That was it. And then Lahan, Lahan's got, you know, he got popped. Yep, and that was all about the curtain call. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, did approximately 10 damage in the death recap, I think, but gets kill credit. And 104 now will be Mystic's scoreline. Freaker Freaks is now having to try and defend this turret. It's very, very low, but you can see Hanwha not quite able to even get up to it. Only the Varus with uh, any range to speak of, really, apart from Lahens, and uh, Lava wants to kill it, and uh, he's able to stop some backs. Oh, wow. That Good chunk was, of damage. Uh, very close. But, yeah, I mean, even with the Rift Herald, uh, can't knock down this tower. Mm -hmm. So th they need that. They want to open up this map a lot more. Having that mid-tier one still be there is a bit of a sanctuary here for Afrika. It means that Hanwha Life cannot pursue nearly as much as they would like, and given that 
That Infernal Dragon and the potential soul is going to be coming up in 50 seconds. They need as much room as humanly possible to work with. The thing I want to talk about is uh, now sort of like build order change uh, for Mystic on the Jin. You have a look at it and you're like, all right, no, this is just the standard Essence Reaver into Zeal Item X into the Infinity Edge. But he had two of the Cloaks of Agility. And now with the fact that uh, Zeal is built out of the Cloak of Agility, you can do that to get even more cooldown reduction earlier with your Essence Reaver as another Culling again. flies down. The Curtain Calls there. Supreme Display of Talent locks down three and the bullets still continue flying. But it's not enough to take down Lahans. The rest of his friends were there to keep him safe, but they couldn't do it for but the But it probably turret. doesn't matter. The tower is still going to go down and the Dragon is spawning now in 10 seconds. Lahans is, is down below half Soul. HP. Yeah, Dragon Soul's coming up. Even QV chunked out a bit. Keen's into the back line. Yeah, the exhaust comes through. There's the ult coming out from Lahans, but he's unable to take down Keen, who's pretty tanky with his Black Lever already completed, but Jelly, not so much. He has to run away, fly, not with a large health pool either. Spirit does still have his Moby Boots activated and goes stealthy as uh, the terraform, Terra Shape sorry, comes in on the grass. He's going to be all right as Mystic. That may not have been worth it, but Lahen's now down to about 200, now 500 health with the Piercing Darkness. There's a captive oh. audience to oh. steal away from Haru. That saves them from the Dragon Soul, okay, but he's going to save his life. No, the answer is as Keen still dashing forward. Is the camouflage enough? Oh, man, he's going to need as much as he can get as Keen waiting for the Relentless Pursuit because that's exactly what he's doing. Goodness me, another culling. He's also okay. almost got Flash. He's that almost got flourish. Flash. Amazing stuff. The Piercing Light is too good. The Flash out tried to get the double tap, but there was the Seraph's Embrace available from Cuvee that once again is going to stop him from falling too quickly in that fight. But damn, that looked so cool. Keen, my god, legendary now on this Lucian. I know, have we discovered, is it the Lucian or is it just Keen? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> That's all we can say. We don't know until somebody else plays it. We have a sample size yeah. of one. And based on this, Hanwa is never letting this get through a draft again. So we won't be seeing it again today. Nope. Tonight. Whatever. And, uh, maybe the other teams were watching this as well. Or maybe they were asleep. As uh, Yeah, that was close. 270 health are just uh, waiting on the smite very nicely. Yeah, I mean, Keen. From there, he could just continue to pursue. Uh, he was just waiting on that timing. You can see it just sliver there left for that flash to become available so he can make that ballsy play. They get the lockdown onto the, the Deadly Flourish, so the double tap is able to clean up the hands. And oh, so he cool. wanted to get that kill underneath the turret, but couldn't quite make it happen, but still looked very stylish and has grown his bounty up to 700 gold with that 802. Like you said, legendary status obtained. Is it going to have to pull back though as that Sonic Wave connects, as does the Piercing Arrow. And they finally are able to claim this mid-tier 1 tower. But for Hanwha, where do you go from here? Keen is pushing into the bottom side right now. Going to be threatening damage onto that turret. Not from himself, but from the minions. It's already taken a considerable amount of damage. So that's going to get chipped away at. So they have to send one down to the bottom lane. And Spirit goes for a gank. Yep. Goodbye, Lahens. No supreme display of talent necessary. He saves that to utilize against him to try and keep himself alive. And the teleport comes forward. Spirit survives as well. Gets out with a well-timed stopwatch. But Mystic is not so lucky on the opposite side. He hadn't actually completed his timepiece just yet. Did utilize the flash, but it was not good enough. As Hanwha trade one for one support for AD Carry. And Jelly. Just a bit out of position there to try to save. Mystic was very much focused on keeping Spirit alive as he was the first one getting targeted by Hanwa after the initial gank onto Lehens. So wasn't really able to get over towards Mystic who was trying to make something happen, but he's a 1v it's a 1v2 as a Jin. So he gets taken out. Yeah, and so much burst damage coming out from uh, Lava as well. We haven't had time to talk about it, but it is going to be the lethality build on the Varus, a favorite of Deft's. Uh, most notably, as far as uh, lethality viruses from the bottom side of the map are concerned. But it is going to mean that uh, this Hanwha Life squad, theoretically, like, spikes more in the mid-game rather than the late game. That more DPS-focused, uh, consistent damage Varus certainly does rip through teams when it builds up all of that crit and the Rage... and the... sorry, yeah, the Rage Blade stacks and all that sort of good stuff. Um, but this one... This certainly does a lot of damage if there's no armor on the opponents, but you just passively get armor as you get levels, and it's going to be less and less effective as this game goes on. So is that turret. That's, in fact, not effective at all anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's that doesn't dead. really do much. And for now, it's just going to be posturing around for this next minute and a half you would anticipate as Afrika 
want to get that Dragon Soul for themselves. Hatma trying to get as much ground as they possibly can. Taking down the inner mid tower would certainly help them out a lot and potentially set up for some kind of gank in that lower half of the river or even in the jungle of the Afrika Freaks as they try to go over to the Drake. Won't be able to find it though. Temp gonna be jumping forward, trying to find Spirit, but he's out of there. Yep, the Umbral Glaive spots the ward. He's gonna be able to clear that one out. As you can see, the Baron is littered with vision and Fly is super safe. He's just chilling. Yeah, and talking about, you know, the split push Syndra, you uh, know that you definitely have a hell of a lot of vision control if she is just happily taking an inner turret on the top side of the map while the rest of her team is in the mid lane. So you can see all of those wards display exactly that. As uh, this Louis Vuitton back is certainly very, very cool. Yep. From Spirit. He's got a good amount of gold. So we'll just go ahead and pick up that Warhammer. Yep, Corefield's Warhammer alongside his uh, Serrated Dirk. That is going to be his second Serrated Dirk worth of lethality. Alongside his Umbral Glaive. I just like the name of that uh, that item. We've noticed. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think everyone has. Uh, almost with the Infinity Edge done uh, for Mystic. He just needs that recipe completed as Lava doesn't find the Piercing All Arrow. Right. Tempt. He's going to be taken down. Ooh. Stopwatch is there. Don't know whether it's enough as the Flash is good. As Tempt does get out, but not out far enough. And Lava, he's running as fast as his little legs will carry him. Spirit as well, looking to chase down the hands with Blast That's going all. there. They just have to in fight. case. They're going to have to fight here. Vision control coming through now for the side of Afrika, getting rid of the wards in the river. The dragon has been started. This Haru is on spotted. Haru. He has to steal it. This has to be a steal. Can he do it again? That's going to be the question. Lava trying to poke out. Well, it doesn't connect. Oh, no. Lower and lower. The Chains of Corruption certainly the important part. 1,500 health is now. The burst damage is coming in, but it He's resets for a moment. There's the Dragon Soul picked up by Spirit. Two Infernal Drakes now as well. So much extra damage from this Afrika Freak squad as uh, Hummelife try to chase down the low health bars of Afrika because if they get this reset, they're just going to be oh so much more difficult to take on and it'll be a fight around a Baron have that they have it. to contend with. Yep, they're going to Realm Warp over, but they're on vision, so Afrika perfectly aware of this and they just have to kind of wait, so they're going to... Oh, God. Yeah, they Classic have to do this. Brush. They have to do this, Achilleos, because they have a lethality Varus. They don't have a Blade of the Ruined King. Their Baron actually isn't that fast. Ward going down. Not going to spot out anything. And Afrika says, okay, sure, you're not on it. We're just going to charge straight up the mid lane. They tax him that tier 2 tower. Wow, TP yeah. into the mid lane now for Lava. Straight up calling their bluff right here. Yep. Control wards were, were in that pit. And Afrika say, no, nah, you ain't doing it. It was just so well set up. There's too many piercing abilities in this game, Helios. Just too many. Now push over. So vision control back through for Afrika. All right, and next team fight. You're taking the next team fight. You have to call out every uh, piercing ability name. Oh, no. Just to update you, uh, Lahens, that, that move that does the line thing, that's piercing darkness. You know the other one. Okay. Yeah. Do I? <laughs> yep. So piercing darkness, yeah, piercing, darkness piercing, piercing light, light, and piercing arrow. And piercing arrow. Yeah. Okay. Just the three. Yeah. That's fine. So that's that's going to be your your little fun task. I think we can manage it. Do you have flash cards? Any flash cards for this real quick? Um, yeah, I could probably bring it up. All right, cool. Um, I'll have a look. I'll work on the flash cards. You just work on the memory because I probably won't have the flash cards. All right. Okay, cool. Fair enough. Um, because Ow. Mystic's going to have his back stopped, so this is not going to be the team fight. That was, however, a piercing arrow. It was. Perfect example. Another Oop. one. Thank you very much, Lava. Here we go. Picked by that one. Spirit going to be moving forward. Ult not really going to clip anybody. Keen now coming in from the backside. Dashes forward. Instantly has to go golden as the depth charge does come through. French line in. Finds the Tom Kenshla heads. Getting blown up. Pops his own. He's just to try to stay alive as the devourer comes in on to Keen. Okay. Trying to keep himself alive. A sliver oh of He still has not gone down. This man will not Pop. die. And the rest of Afrika are able to pick up the kills here in the fight. Jump with the wall from Haru. With that resonating strike will take him out to safety as Spirit continues to chase forward. Plenty of damage. Output coming through from Hanwha, oh, but check. they just can't get the kills. Oh my goodness, Spirit was I didn't so call close. Any of the piercing stuff, so I know, thoughts. I know. I could, I, I, I counted a few of them, but it's much easier when I don't actually have to talk at the same time as play by playing. So I'm just not even going to critique it. This is going to be the Afrika Freaks taking a Baron down very comfortably. You saw just how powerful that Dragon Soul was, uh, was able to be in the hands of the Afrika Freaks. But now Haru, can he do it again? The thief wait this himself. Out. They wait out for the, the Sonic Wave. Now the cooldown. Is Keen's there. back, guys. Uh, and yeah, that's a very cold Nautilus. That's a very cold everybody. 
A very dead Baron as well. Ooh, Aru? Does he do it? Is he feeling it? No. Heck no. <laughs> no chance. Oh, man. That's, uh, that's called not having uh, much faith in your ability to win the game if you make that particular move. Uh, Keen is so scary. Yes. Yes, he is. It's 18 to 4 with uh, just about a 10,000 gold lead. We're 100 or so shy of that mark. But Baron and Infernal Soul in the hands of Afrika. So uh, we could put a lot fork in this one. Yeah, I and reckon I'd. 10, 0, and 4. For yep, Mr. Analyst, would you say, because uh, you're allowed to do this now, you're allowed to call the games over. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's, all, that's all like your abilities. You uh, if I that. knew that, I would have said that like 15 minutes ago. Oh, man. All right, well, you know what for game two. made up for some lost time. You know? Yeah, you know what for game two. Or three. <laughs> as, uh, look, if we want to go the distance, if you're going to set a record, you may as well set it. Screw it. Right? Why not? It's probably one of the longest Kesper days ever, right? I'm fine. It was apparently a longer one four years ago, or something like that. Um, I don't quite remember. I probably watched it, but I wasn't here in Korea just yet at that stage. Do they try to set something up here on the <laughs> key? It's still the 2v1's not good enough. No, they can't do it. They can't do it. <laughs> if they try to do this, Spirit's right there. He's waiting in the jungle. So, yeah, they're actually just going to run down to the bottom lane, sit in a brush, and then recall. Yeah. Is what just happened for Haru and Kyuubei. It's like, you know how, like, you go, you climb the big cliff, and you're going to jump off into the water, you know? Mm. They're like, they got up to the top, and they were like, oh, no, nah, man, this is too scary. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to do it. Get me off this Ferris wheel. Yeah. It's a mistake to get on here. Root coming through. Haru going to have to jump to over to the side. Plenty of damage coming through, and he will be taken down. Curtain call shot. Manages to find the kill. In the meantime, Keen pushing forward. The calling going to be coming Ouch. through. Chunks out QV, but doesn't find the kill yet. Depth charge going through. And Keen will, in fact, be taken down in He's this not game. Immortal. The piercing light just wasn't enough to get the kill there Ouch. on to Tempt. As Lava tries to retreat. Mystic chasing forward. However, should be able to finish him oh off. But there God. you go. The near 600 crit does, in <laughs> fact, come through. <laughs> And this will be the end of the game as the first Nexus Heart does fall. The Baron of Power Dominion still continue to push forward. Kyuubei doing his damnedest to clear this out, but uh, there's not a whole lot that he can do at this point. Yeah, the glory ain't as righteous as uh, the item would allow you to believe as Jelly thinking about trying oh to fight him off before this one comes out and is able to pick up the kill, in fact, as the Nexus will go down for game one. Afrika Freaks dominate Humble Life Esports. That they do, a very firm victory. A uh, little slow at the start, you know, we weren't sure exactly what was going to happen with Lucian. We we're talking about it. It's like, oh, you know, like he's he's doing well in the CS. Uh, 